last year. The Badger coach joins us now. And, uh, Coach, I know it wasn't necessarily exactly the year that you wanted last year, maybe falling a little short of some external expectations and probably some internal ones as well. I think the big thing that I look at in your history is, man, Cincinnati, you made an epic jump from year one to year two. So how do you make it? It doesn't have to be as big a jump <laughs> this year. You, you were certainly better in, in year one of Wisconsin. But how do you make a similar improvement in year two here in Madison? Well, I hope that it has a lot to do with reflection, right? It has a lot to do with recognizing some of the things that you maybe overlooked or didn't rec didn't know until you got into that uh, season in adversity. And um, But I think it's really being honest. I think it's really looking in the mirror and saying, okay, honestly, what, what do we need to do to make sure – um, that we're going forward and sometimes that's making some tough decisions sometimes that's making you know some little tweaks and little changes and things here and um, and I think that's what we had to do there were some really tough decisions based on leadership and and things that we had to kind of push you know even our own kids and myself um, to do and I think that uh, we were willing to do that and I hope I know it's going to pay off and I know we'll talk about some of those including some of the changes in your staff as we go along here but one of the things that you have talked about very publicly and you were mentioning it when you spoke to the media at large here earlier was how you handle adversity and that the leadership maybe wasn't exactly where you wanted it to be. I'm curious, how do you infuse that into a program? Like, How do you get guys yeah. to handle adversity? How do you get guys to become good leaders? Uh, maybe we should ask Coach that. I mean, he's done it for a lot longer than I have, but the only way I know how is first and foremost to be an example. And I think that it always is going to start with me. And that the way you handle it, the, the example that you set, the, the way you go about things. Um, but I also think it's understanding we got to know each other. I think that uh, we are a product of our, of our own environments, right? And, and I would tell you a lot of ways the way we handled things last year, I think it's just what they have known. And uh, I don't think that's the best way. I think confronting things, I think being honest and open, whether that's really, really tough to um, – conversations and things like that one-on-one -on -one, as a group I think it has to be handled in those ways and it was a little bit harder for us to kind of learn and, and it's hard to manufacture adversity right throughout the winters and spring balls and there's no adversity there's no challenge like the actual games and what all that provides for you talk about tough decisions I think making assistant coaching changes is one of the most difficult things that a head coach does it involves families and so on you you know it as well as I do what what brings you to those decisions it it, it really is a, a connection I think it really is in, in looking at where the future is going and the things that you need to do and be honest right right I mean we all learn each other as we go through those adversities and, and you recognize the things that your program needs you recognize things that your team needs and I think that's where you have to kind of pinpoint some of those things make some really tough decisions um, so that you know that you can move forward and, and believe in the things that you're doing that are going to help you not just move forward for one year but the future of all things that you're doing and um, it is difficult it's not perfect um, but I think it's very necessary Coach, looking at your schedule this year, a ton of tough opponents. It's a challenging schedule. you got an out-of-conference game against Alabama. And I think about the differences between how an NFL season is managed, how a college season is managed, and now this is the new college season. I'm curious for you, you know, do you change anything about your approach this season? How do you keep your guys fresh? Because you did deal with some injuries last year as well. Yes. Um, I've had a bunch of conversations, you know, trying to pick guys' brains. Uh, obviously, um, Mike Vrabel's a, a good buddy of mine and just trying to, you know, obviously the NFL is different. But it, I think for us in particular in, in our league and, and what we're moving toward towards college, you are creating more of these week in and week out, um, you know, whether it's travels and different things like that. And you got to look at things a little bit different. I'm, I'm old school. You know, I, I, we're going to go away for 13 days for camp. There, there's a lot of things that you have to do. But I also think there's some things that I got to grow in, and it's that ability to say, we've always said you got to play your best ball at the end of the season, right? You got to play great in November in order to have a chance to win a championship. How you get to November, I think, is going to be a little bit different. And so we've adjusted up a little bit how we're going to camp. Some of the things, the days we're on, the days we're not on, as far as camp wise, and, and then we got to do a much better job at playing 22 guys on offense and 22 guys on defense. You know, before you got to Wisconsin, from our view, it looked like you were, your methods in recruiting were a little backward, had not really kept up with the times. You've done much better than, than your predecessors in recruiting. What is your recruiting niche? How, how would you explain it? It's about people, and, and it's about 
it's about relationships. Now, we all know that some of the recruiting is taking an evolution here in the last couple of years, but I don't think it means you have to completely change. You know, to, in order to recruit the right ones, you still got to pinpoint them, you still got to recognize them, and then you still got to go get them. And, and I mean that in the sense that we're taking care of our guys. We're doing just like a lot of other people throughout the country in the, in the way that you take care of your program. But I think it's even more important to really try to hone in and find out what are those right ones for you, the ones that you legitimately have a chance to win. Because if you know you're in a battle where it might be for something that you're not comfortable doing, is it really worth battling? And so I think that us making sure we're doing our best job at, at, at recognizing the talent and the talent that we can develop, but then making sure that we have a chance to, to go coast to coast, which is what I've been surprised with at Wisconsin, and I think that we've done a – a better job than I ever would have thought is our ability to go from the East Coast to the West Coast and have a bunch of guys from 13 different states even in last year's class. I feel like the transfer portal has its positives. It also has its challenges, right? And particularly at the quarterback position where that is the leader of your team. And there has to be some comfort and familiarity quarterback to the rest of the locker room, quarterback to the play caller mm -hmm. and offensive coordinator. You went back to the portal this year to get Van Dyke curious if you were able to take anything away from that process last year going through it with uh, Mordecai. Yeah, I, I do think it's, it's unique that you have a really short amount of time to try to make sure you're feeling like it's the right one. I didn't mean uh, what's his arm strength? You can watch all these games. You know, Tanner Mordecai played against, but do you really know what the right one? Do you really know what's inside that chest? Are you really ever around those guys? Our matrix when you know, trying to take a one-year or two-year guy, even when we were at Cincinnati, it had a lot to do with what's your history with him, what do you really know about him, do you really know the family, have you been in that home? With these quarterbacks, you don't have that opportunity. So it's kind of been outside of our comfort zone, studying, understanding who they are, but then really when you get them, have them to be able to ask some really tough questions, really almost like you're interviewing a, a coach, even though you're recruiting them, to say, okay, tell me about your failures. Tell me why, and, and are you mature enough to be able to move past that? Because you got eight months to, in some ways, grasp an entire locker room to follow you. One of the things that was really interesting offensively last year was this dramatic change that you guys made philosophically over what Wisconsin had been historically, bringing in Phil Longo to run an air raid style attack. And it did have kind of some mixed results and probably to be expected, right, when you're making as dramatic an overhaul like that with a roster that was largely already in place. So how do you feel you'll be better in year two of that system? Like, Where do you think you've made the biggest strides to really get it to where you want it to be? Well, I would think you'd say the simplest answer is, you know, we've added some pieces, right? You've added some athleticism. You've added some, some guys on the edges. You've added some running backs. But I would really tell you, it's adding some togetherness. We struggled when it came down to it because I don't know deep down inside that all believed in what it is that we were doing. And as a coach, you would understand this. Like you, you have to go through some of those times. You have to figure out some of those things. And that's why some of that adversity that we hit. Look, we, we could have masked a lot of that adversity. Everybody has injuries. If you don't have an injury to a quarterback and a running back that was critical to us, we could have masked some of the things that we had an opportunity to see and, and kind of come you know, full, full circle in that one year. Um, our ability to make some of those changes within our own staff and within our own you know, core nucleus of, of, of players gives us the greatest advantage moving into year two than even the addition of some of the athletes and some of the skill. How have you learned the offense and how have you enjoyed learning the offense? I, I enjoy it. I mean, I, I do. I've, I've always enjoyed learning some different and new things. My thing is, is I don't want to learn your old offense. I want to learn the Wisconsin offense. Right. And, and we're still always morphing and always adjusting and always changing. Even in these next 39 days, we have to morph, adjust, and adapt our offense based on what shows up in camp, what the competitive spirit looks like, what the guys that emerge. And we've got to be better, even on defense, at making sure we're playing to the strengths of our people as opposed to the strengths of what it is in our head and our knowledge. Jake mentioned your schedule. It is difficult. <laughs> it includes a non-conference game, as he said, against Alabama. I know when you're a coach, you're not getting caught up in the excitement around a game, right? You're thinking about watching tape and how can we beat these guys, and I get all of that. However, yeah. you've got Alabama <laughs> coming to Camp Randall. 
if, if you can take off the how are we going to beat these guys and what are we going to do and what's Kalen going to be doing and all that, like tell me about the excitement of that game and of hosting a team of that stature in your home state. Well, I think it has a little bit to do with what Jake asked and, and how do you attack the season, right? I mean, you got to have a plan. And is it closer towards an NFL model in some ways? And, and, and yes, it is because we've got to be ready coming out of the gates. And I don't mean we weren't trying to say we weren't going to be ready coming out the gates last year, but we've got to understand that if we're not firing all cylinders in week one, we can't grow to week two, which then we can't grow to week three which is going to be the greatest test to say, where are you? Not that you're not testing in week one and two, but regardless of what happens in one and two, we're going to have a lot better idea of where we are as a staff, where we are as a program, where we are as a team in week three because of the challenges, because of the hype, because of all those things being said. So as a coach, it's daunting, right? I mean, I don't want to look at the schedule. I didn't look at it till about six weeks ago. Everybody asked, and I knew Alabama was on it. But as we move into these next 39 days, it's very motivating. It's put in front of our guys to understand there's a reason that we're practicing the way we are doing. There's a reason we did some of the OTAs the way we're doing. And there's a reason we're tacking the way we're doing because we've got to be making sure that we're a lot further along, not just for week one and two, but because of the challenge that we're going to be able to find out a lot about ourselves. You've been to the 14 playoff at Cincinnati. It feels like the 12 team playoff is a great opportunity for Wisconsin. You go through historically who are the teams who would have been in. Wisconsin would have been there many times. So how do you sell that now? This, I mean, again, you're talking about what's next, but can you use, hey, look at the historical success we've had. Look at this new model of college football and what this could mean for you. It, it does. I, I think it's even bigger outside your program. I mean, just getting the excitement of everybody around, uh, the, the, the growth of continuing to you know, grow your, you know, your product, meaning continue to build the facilities and things that you always have to continue to do. From within our program, I think it, they understand it's the greatest thing for college football. It, it makes that last three or so weeks of the season incredibly that much more meaningful. It gives you so many more opportunities. Like, again, it's like the Alabama. It, it's motivating in so many more ways throughout your season, meaning you play a game like Alabama in, in week three, it doesn't make or break the complete season, understanding where you're headed and what opportunities are in front of you. And I think that's great for us. But I think that's even greater for all of college football and, and what we have a chance to continue to grow. Yeah, it's an exciting season for many reasons, and certainly the 12-team playoff is one of them. Luke Fickle, always great to see you. Thanks, Thanks. a lot, Coach. Appreciate it, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Coach.